Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we are going to talk about functions. So we will start by talking about what functions are, and then we'll go over the different ways of defining them, both function definitions and function expressions. Finally, we will look at ES6 arrow functions and talk about the different things that it gives us. Let's get started. All right, so what are functions? Functions are one of the fundamental building blocks of JavaScript. They are reusable blocks of code that can be called or executed when we want. Functions can be written in two different ways, function declarations and function expressions. Let's first explore function declarations. So it starts with the word function, and then there is a name that describes what it does, and then two parentheses like this, followed by curly brackets, and then within the curly braces, we have all of the code that we would want to execute. So let's change this into an actual working example. Let's first change the name to greeting, and within the function, let's put a console log saying, oh, hello there. Now when I save, we can see that nothing happens. And this is because we need to call the function. To do this, we use the function name, so greeting, and then we put the double parentheses around it again. And if I save now, in the console we get, oh, hello there. It's also worth noting that the curly brackets, which contains the function body, also creates a function scope where code from outside of the function cannot use variables defined inside of the function. So if I have a variable inside of the function, and in this case it's called variable from inside, so if I try and console log this variable, it doesn't have access to it. So if I save now, we are going to get an uncaught reference error where it says that the variable from inside, which is this variable here, is not defined. So this console log here doesn't have access to this variable inside the function. And so when you're trying to use it, it throws an error because it doesn't know what variable you're talking about. Beautiful. So next, let's talk about parameters. Think of a parameter as a variable that a function needs in order to work. We can name them whatever we want. But again, just like function names, it's best to give these parameters something descriptive that another human would understand. So let's give a parameter here of name and let's change the console log to have template literals so that we can add a string interpolation here. So that means that we add a dollar sign and then two curly brackets and within there we can use variables directly within the string. Now if we call the function as is and let's save, we're going to get oh hello there undefined and that's because it's expecting a name to go in there. So when you call the function, Within the parentheses here, this is where you put the parameter. So let's put a string saying Paxton. And if I save now, we can see, oh, hello there, Paxton. I'm going to make the console log a little bit bigger. There you go. So, oh, hello there, Paxton. We can have as many parameters as we need, separating them with a comma. So if we say uh, whatever here, then if we put a comma when we're calling it, whatever we put as the second argument will become this second parameter here. So if I say, yay, and then add the parameter here, so whatever, and if I save, now we can see, oh, hello there, Paxton, yay. Also, when you are defining a function, it's called a parameter. However, when you are calling that function, it's called an argument. All right, so that covers function declarations. Now let's take a look at the other way of writing functions, which is called function expressions. So let's grab this function declaration here and rewrite it as a function expression. So a function expression is a function which is bound to a variable. Think of it as a variable which expresses a function. We first start by giving it a variable. So let's say const greeting is equal to, and now we can get rid of this greeting over here. And just like that, we now have a function expression. So with these expressions, the return of the function is stored in this variable. And just like before, we can call these function expressions 
by using the name of it. And then this one has a parameter. And so we need to give it an argument here. So again, Paxton, and if I save, now we can see just like before, oh, hello there, Paxton. So you may be asking, what are the differences and which one should I use? The main difference between the function declarations and function expressions is that you can call function declarations before you define it and your code will work. However, with function expressions, you will get an uncaught reference error in the console saying that it cannot access the variable before initialization. This is because of hoisting. Hoisting is something JavaScript does right before it runs your code. It moves all of the variables and function declarations to the top of your code. So let me show you that with a quick example. I'm gonna paste some code here. We have function declaration and it asks, am I hoisted? And then we have a function expression, which also has a console log, which is asking, am I being hoisted? So let's comment out the expression and save. With the function declaration, everything is still working and we can see the console log here. However, with the function expression, if I save now, we can see that we get this uncaught reference error. Personally, I use function expressions more as it forces me to define all of my functions at the top of my code, keeping better track of where I define functions and where I'm calling them. All right, so one other very important thing I'd like to talk about is how regular functions like this have changed throughout time. So in 2015, an update for JavaScript was released called ES6, and this brought something called arrow functions. And arrow functions are a different way of writing function expressions. So just like before, let's get this function expression here and we'll paste it down and let's change it over to an arrow function. I'm gonna just add an S here, so for greetings, so that it stops complaining because we have two functions with the same name. Now to change this to an arrow function, all we have to do is get rid of the function keyword and to the right of the parameters, we are going to add an equal sign and then a greater than sign, which creates a little arrow here. And just like that, we now have an arrow function. There are some advantages to writing arrow functions. The biggest one is that with an arrow function, it automatically binds the this keyword to the surrounding code's context. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on what the this keyword is, as I'm going to be releasing a video dedicated to it. However, I will leave some resources in the description down below if you'd like to read up a little bit more on it. Arrow functions are also just a bit shorter and they are a more modern syntax. So I definitely write arrow functions over the older way of writing regular function expressions. Beautiful. So the final thing that I wanna show you is something called default parameters. So just like before, when we typed in greetings and we left the arguments empty, we can see that it says hello undefined. And that's because we didn't add any arguments there. However, if we add an equal sign here and let's say Paxton, and if I save now, we can see that even though there are no arguments given when you call the function, it defaults to whatever value we put here. But if we added an argument like Bob here and we save, now Bob overwrites this default parameter. So we can see in the console, we have hello, Bob. All right, so that covers functions in JavaScript. If you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments section down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button as it really helps this channel out. This video is part of a JavaScript fundamental series that I'm working on, which are all on these foundational topics that can sometimes be a little bit trickier to understand. So if you're interested in seeing more of them, then be sure to subscribe. With that out of the way, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one.